good morning. That's my child because he wants to go outside. <coughs> Story of my life. He never wants to stay inside. I can never get anything done. Um, so we just woke up. I turned my pasta sauce on low when I woke up. And now I'm currently taking a break from tomato land and I'm making us breakfast because I'm hungry. And then after that, I will start processing the other ones that I have outside. What are you doing? What are you doing? Really? Oh. Okay, guys. This is the state of the pasta sauce. It has cooked down about an inch and a half. And I'm just going to keep it going. I'm now going to start cutting these apples that I have over here for apple pie filling and apple sauce <clears throat> and then I'm going to start on the tomatoes outside hopefully you guys can hear me but I just wanted to show you all the varieties of apples that I have so I have Granny Smith that I got from Kroger these I got before I got all of these on the that are just out I got Honeycrisp and Pink Lady and I got all of those last week in my order from Kroger and that was when I made apple butter I think <laughs> Michael. and then these all down here I think these are I don't know if these are Cortland or John of gold I don't know if my mom watches this she's probably gonna be like come on I know these three are golden delicious I got those at jungle gyms some of these red ones I got at jungle gyms um, these green ones are Macintosh. I think some of these ones are Melrose. My mom might have snuck those in there. And then um, past that, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm going to just use a variety of all of these. I'm going to make some applesauce. And then um, I'm going to cut. I'm just going to cut them exactly like this. And then I'll take some for applesauce and then some for apple pie filling. Um, okay, there's a pot of apples that I just peeled and sliced. Here's a strainer of apples that I peeled and sliced. That is enough for my applesauce. Um, I just immersion blended my pasta sauce, and I don't feel like it got it fine enough. Let me flip. So I don't feel like it's fine enough. It's quite chunky. If you like a chunky sauce, this would be perfect for you. Arlo, hold on. So it's, I don't want it that chunky, so I'm going to let it cool down, and then I'm going to stick it in my Ninja, but right now, um, so yeah.
guys. So we've wandered outside because someone can't stand to be inside any longer. So I um, filled those jars with pasta sauce and I showed you guys that. And then I stuck them in my pressure canner that was already warming up because it was a hot pack. So I had to have my canner warming up. And then, um, let me sit down. Oh gosh. Oh man, I almost fell out of this thing. Anyway, so I had my canner warming up because it was a hot pack, like I said. So, um, once I had all the jars filled, wiped the rims, put the lids on, I went ahead and loaded them into the pressure canner. We are going to, um, wait for it to start jiggling. And I might crack a, well, it's kind of warm out here, so I might not crack a door. But I think the window's still open, so I should be able to hear it as long as we're out here. But I think it'll probably take a good 10 minutes at least for the pressure to build, maybe longer. And then um, once the pressure gets up to um, 10 pounds, then it will pressure can for... I believe it's 20 or 25 minutes, might be 25. Um, I'll have to look it up just to make sure. And then um, I also washed out the pot that the pasta sauce was in and filled it with all those apples that we had peeled and cut. So those are simmering down for applesauce. They need to simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes before I add the rest of the ingredients that I need. And then I think that will be probably perfect to use the immersion blender with. Um, so we'll try it out. But for right now, I am going to take this child on a ride because he's obsessed. And I'm probably going to clean up the yard a little bit. And then we're going to deal with these tomatoes that I have sitting outside. Do you like it? Someone approves. Approves. Do you want more? Yeah. You want me to get you more on your spoon? So I've blended it to a point where it's just slightly chunky. We got to blow on it. Here, blow on it. Yeah, good job. Guys, I just wanted to show you before I forgot. I'm immersion blending this applesauce. I already added my ingredients. I added, um, I'd say about a tablespoon of cinnamon. I didn't want to add too much cinnamon. And I added a half a cup of brown sugar and a half a cup of boiled apple cider because we just bought some at um, this farm. Yes, watch your hands, please. So anyway, I'm just blending it up. I'm going to blend it towards maybe slightly chunky. Okay, I'm now filling these jars. I decided to do pint jars. I All I did was um, wash these in hot water. I don't feel the need, honestly, to um, what do you say? Sterilize my jars. I just feel like hot water does the trick because I'm pressure canning them, so I don't think it's a huge deal. So any chunks that are bigger than I want, I'm going to leave in here. And I'm thinking about just um, eating them tonight with dinner. Um, so yeah, I'm going to fill all these up. And then I'm going to take the pasta sauce out of here. And put the apple sauce in there. Okay guys, so I ended up with five quarts of pasta sauce. One pint. That's just going to go in the fridge. And then I ended up with um, seven half pints and five pints of apple sauce and this bowl which I think we're gonna just snack on and then now I'm actually gonna go outside on the side porch with Arlo what do you have in your mouth give me that what is that oh my gosh it's apple all right so I'm actually gonna oh, I'm going to go out on the side porch where I have all of these tomatoes and I'm gonna throw some gloves on and lock Arlo in this porch and hopefully I can actually get these cord and um, scored, cord and scored. Come on, let's go outside. And then um, I will, I'm actually gonna unlock this door too. That way I can go up inside if I need to. So I'm gonna open this 
and I'll probably just go out there from in here. But I only have one glove left. So I actually saved the last pair. So I'm going to turn it inside out and rinse it off. I'm going to core those, score those, bring them in here, and then do diced tomatoes. Are you digging? Are you vacuuming it up? Clean up your mess. Okay, guys. Oh, that was really bright. That was way more than I bargained for. That's fine. I just came out to the garage to grab some of my gloves that Michael has for me out there for when I help him <clears throat> in the garage. And I got them because I'll show you guys in here. Actually get in here. I have eczema. I don't even know if it'll focus. You can see it on my thumb, and then on my other hand, I have it on my pointer finger. It's not so much that I'm worried about being like safe, like not contaminating things because. This one is a little red, but it's not actively bleeding. But the reason why I need gloves is, Ooh, let me set you up here. The reason why I need gloves is the acidity in these tomatoes irritates my skin, my sensitive skin, and it's extra sensitive these past few weeks, so I'm wearing gloves. Um, sorry if you can't hear me, my dryer's running, and I think there's a pair of bibs in there that has um, metal on it, so it's loud. Let me just show you guys my station here of what's going on, what I'm doing, and then I'm going to get started. So these are all the tomatoes that I just blanched. They are ready to be peeled. These are the tomatoes, a few of them that I've peeled because I wanted to test how well um, I was doing with blanching them. Here's my peels um, from last night, and I'm just going to keep adding peels to them. If I don't dehydrate them, I'll just give them to the chickens or put them in the garden and let them compost in place. These are jars that I've opened and got ready to fill with my diced tomatoes. Now, I'm doing the um, diced tomato method where you just dice them and completely fill the jars up full and then you pressure can them and i believe that's in the jar or in the um balls book of home canning but i'm not sure but basically pressure canning them makes them release enough water um that or enough liquid tomato juice basically that um you don't need to add water so that's what i'm going to try to do today and we will see how it goes hopefully fingers crossed it's better than next year so i will update you guys when i have these jars filled and i'm ready to process them do i look like a hot mess because i feel like a hot mess or just a mess actually um okay guys i cleaned all my dishes which is a big step for me now i know that sounds really silly because most of you who already have life figured out are like, why would it be so such a big deal to wash your dishes? Well, I have a bad habit of just getting too exhausted and going to sleep and leaving the dishes, which 
really honestly just set you up for failure because it's such a disappointment to wake up to dishes. So, um, I washed all my dishes and my diced tomatoes, the um, timer just went off for those. So, I turned the burner off. I moved them away from being directly on the burner and I'm waiting for those to come down and pressure. I think it's going to take them a hot second and I don't want to rush it because I don't want them to siphon any liquid out. <clears throat> so, um, right now, after I clean my counter off because it was bothering me, um, I am going to go ahead and start doing those tomatoes over here now I've decided I looked in here I have one two three four five bags of romas and I have three bags of just regular old tomatoes so I think the three bags of regular tomatoes I think I'm gonna jar them up and just do crushed tomatoes I hope I don't regret that later maybe I'm kind of debating on if I'll do tomato soup instead the romas I was either going to do tomato soup or salsa, but truthfully, I probably have enough to do both. So, um, the ones that are going in the pot are the Romas. So I'm going to do those first because I think that would help me kind of narrow down. Maybe while I do the Romas, I can decide about the other tomatoes and figure out what I want to do. When I put these in the pot, I'll see how many Romas I actually have and that will let me know because this bag, like, I think it's Romas, but I no, I think it is. Oh Lord, there's a lot of liquid in there. Okay, yeah, I think it is. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five bags. So I'm gonna start with those. Okay, as you guys can see, it's 7 p.m. The baby is asleep. Thank goodness. Um, these are those tomatoes that I peeled earlier while the baby was awake, around probably five o'clock. I went ahead and put ingredients in here for tomato soup, and I'm going to do a tomato basil soup. So there's basil, parsley, onion, celery, salt, and pepper in here, and bay leaves. And I think that's it. <clears throat> and I'm just going to cook this um, down enough that to where I feel like it's cooked, I'll probably use um, the blender to blend it up really finely, and then... I'm going to can it, and probably when I cook this, I'll just add um, some heavy cream to it whenever I want to eat it. So this is water that I'm just waiting um, for it to boil. These are my tomatoes that I had cored and scored. These are the rest of the tomatoes that are cored and scored. There's still a few out on the table. This is cold water. I need to add some ice to it, but I just wanted to wait until I actually start doing this process. And, yeah, so I'm just waiting for the water to boil, which is very soon. I can see that it, the water's moving around, so that should happen really soon. And then I'm going to start blanching these to get the skins off and putting them in the cold water so they can cool down. And then I'm going to dice them. These are going to be my diced tomatoes. I forgot to show you guys what I have so far, too. I have five quarts of tomato sauce, or pasta sauce. One, two, three, four, five pints of applesauce and seven half pints of applesauce. <clears throat> I did half pints because I didn't want, um, I wanted to have little portions, like just in case I wanted to just bring this half pint to work or something. Okay, guys, so here's a little update. It is 9.19. I last videoed at like 7.30. My workstation has been changed. Um, I finished peeling, sorry, I finished peeling and dicing all the tomatoes that I had blanched. Um, so I ended up with, there are three quarts, one pint and a half here, waiting for the next um, available um, pressure canning time. So these are, I think there's seven quarts in there. I might be wrong. So I think I ended up with about 10 quarts and one pint and a half from those tomatoes that I had blanched. Um, I'm waiting for this to come up to pressure 
it feels like it's taken forever, but um, I went ahead and took that time to finish those. And then I took my tomato soup off of the burner about an hour ago and I just blended it up and jarred it up and it looks really good. I actually didn't taste it, but that's only because I, I smelled it. I feel like it tastes great. And, um, I plan to taste and doctor this up when I cook it because, um, it is not safe to can with butter or heavy cream and a lot of the tomato soup recipes online that I was looking at, because I've never made it before, um, they called for butter or some type of dairy product, and I wanted it to be safe to can. So I just found a recipe that was really simple to um, follow, and I kind of like altered it because that's what I do. So um, I think I videoed what I had put in there before um, in a previous clip, but it's been such a long day, I can't really remember. So I put salt, pepper, um, brown sugar. Um, I went out and got some basil and parsley from the garden and tomatoes and onions. And that's it. I'm, oh, and garlic. So I think that's all that I put in there. And I'm just, I blended it up and I'm just going to can this. And when I'm ready to eat this, I will reheat it, add heavy cream and, um, taste it for seasoning. <clears throat> so, so far we have five quarts of pasta sauce, five pints of applesauce, seven half pints of applesauce, five quarts of tomato soup, and 10 quarts of diced tomatoes, and one pint and a half of diced tomatoes. So, well, I guess it's four quarts of tomato soup and one pint and a half. But anyway, <clears throat> this is what I have canned today. And because that, um, don't mind my dishes. I'm about to do that once I finish this clip. Um, but because my diced tomatoes are taking so long to come up to pressure and I have to do another round and then after that I have to do the tomato soup, I figured I have enough time to peel the, the last of the freezer tomatoes and I'll probably peel these and put them in a pan or a pot and then um, put them in the fridge either in here or outside and then process these tomorrow when I get home because I just don't see myself having enough time tonight to actually um, finish a ca another canning project. So, um, but I might change my mind, so I'll update you guys and let you know what I come up with. But for now, I'm going to take these out of their peels and put them in a pot. Okay, guys, <clears throat> it's 1140. I showered, <clears throat> switched my laundry, folded three loads of laundry. Clean the kitchen, finished peeling those frozen defrosted um, tomatoes. I ended up with one stock pot and one sauce pot, saucepan, whatever, and um, I put those in the fridge. Those will be used tomorrow. I went ahead and just peeled everything and put them all together. So um, I'm probably just going to combine them all and do, I'll probably do one salsa and one something else, either tomato sauce or not tomato sauce, tomato soup or something um so i'm going to decide that tomorrow at work but i wanted to show you what i ended up with now i do still have four can cans four jars of tomato soup in the pressure canner that i just took off of the heat i'm gonna let that naturally um come down let the pressure come down and i'll probably remove them in the morning um but yeah, that's I made out with. So a pretty good haul for one day, one massive day of canning. And I will say this method that I did of these diced tomatoes, these are still really hot, but um, the method that I did just raw packing them and not adding any water really worked. Um, and I think once they cool down, I'm just going to shake them and see if that helps with the liquid um, disbursement. But it actually worked really well, and I feel like there's quite a bit of tomatoes per jar, which makes me really happy because last year, my um, diced tomatoes literally like floated up to here, and there was so much liquid. So, 
Um, and it looks like everything is sealing really well, so that also makes me feel very pleased. Um, except for this tomato soup, but I don't think it's done yet because it's still really hot. So, um, this is the end of this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed processing tomatoes with me and apples um, this weekend and yeah, stay tuned for more. I'm really glad that I got it all done. I, I mean, I still have stuff to do, story of life, that's just life, but I'm really glad that I got all of these projects done that have been on the back of my mind and um, I still have tomatoes outside on the porch. Um, I did not get a chance to core and score them all, so I do have those as well that I can core and score this week and either do more diced tomatoes or just freeze them and do a batch of something else. So I don't know what I want to do with those yet, but um, yeah, stay tuned for the next one.